So this is the house we're building and we did something to bring it to life. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Our call is to work for our Father 24-7, 365 days a year. 60% of our waking hours are spent working. That's 90,000 hours in an average lifetime. Yet surveys show 70% of us spend over half of these waking hours in jobs we don't enjoy, aren't engaged in, or even hate. God has something better in mind. Christians can make a difference. In Christ, we are the light of the world. Discover, Discover work light. Come together to make the light of Christ brighter in the workplace. Work light empowers Christians across traditions, occupations, and positions to influence coworkers and impact workplaces. Worklight provides practical resources that are adaptable and free. Worklight helps Christians form groups that support one another in being co-workers in Christ. Worklight joins with you to build the kingdom of God by aligning your occupation with God's mission. Christians who take advantage of Worklight resources experience more joy in their work as they connect with other Christians for support and encouragement. Greater integrity as God's truth influences their work life. Personal encouragement fueled by first-hand accounts and practical insights. Worklight helps you experience the kingdom of God. Worklight will help you bring the light of Christ into your workplace. Let, Let us come, come together, together to live as people of light. So it's all about uniting Christians to shine bright at their work. Bringing Christians together to live the gospel and figure out a way. I, I can remember uh, Bill Delgate, this goes back a ways, uh, maybe 20 years, when uh, Tim Rowland and Bill Delgate were on the board. And one of the things in one of our board meetings and seeking the Lord, we really felt God wanted us to do is emphasize being Christ in the workplace. And the other one was to give our stuff away. And uh, I think we did very good at getting the thing about being Christ in the workplace out there. But uh, it was more of a struggle trying to figure out how to give our stuff away. And so we really, over the years, have been developing a huge amount of content, which has been primarily your stories. That is our real asset that we have, is a practical application of Christ in your lives, illustrated through our workday reflections. We have hundred, literally hundreds of them, maybe 800 of them. And uh, that we're, we're trying to figure out how to repurpose that. And you'll hear us talk about this later, but this has a real impact. This is a way to really connect with people. And this afternoon, you're going to get, you're going to experience us generate a whole bunch more with the individuals who are going to get up and share and us take, filming them and capturing them. The other thing, technology has changed greatly since uh, Louis founded us in 1983. And we need to take advantage of that technology and the way people consume information. And we need to use the power of the first aid accounts that all of you have helped us develop. You know, and the thing that's so amazing, it isn't so much the extraordinary situations that resonate with us, it's the ordinary situations that all of us find ourselves in day in and day out in the gray areas where we try to navigate our way through with our faith in Christ. And the small groups, we would say the affection and the bonds that you have formed together in your small groups, we want to foster more of that. 
we want to stir the spirit and the, there's a sense of community that we have together that we just want to be a catalyst for them. So we want to reach followers where they work and how they consume information. We want to deliver on-demand, practical, and applicable content. And we want to draw them together across traditions, occupations, and positions to influence their workplace and coworkers. <clears throat> I probably have had a little bit more exposure. There are actually lots of different faith organizations out there doing a lot of good work. I think when Louis started this, Louis Judd and Bud started this, we were one of the few people that were out there. And now all kinds of them have sprung up, but they live in silos. There's like an evangelical silo over here, then there's some Catholic groups over here, and they just don't really connect very well. And I think that one of the gifts that God has given to us is that we've crossed traditions. And the other thing we really want to be is we just want to be a corporate America organization we want to reach into every area that people have careers of work, whether it be medical school, blue collar, white collar, doesn't make a difference to us. And if be able to let them shine bright and light their workplaces. So as I said a little bit earlier, we want this to fan the flame. That's what we want it to do. Create these new small groups that invigorate and reinvigorate existing ones. There are small groups out there, a lot of them I mean, if you go into a lot of these big corporate organizations, they have Christian groups within them, and they typically take stuff that they normally do at church and bring it into the workplace, like a Bible study or uh, a book they're reading or something like that, which uh, doesn't really put it in the context of where, where God has called them to live together and support one another. And I think the challenge going forward is, as the world becomes more and more secular, the challenge is going to be how do we live as our faith in a way with integrity, boldness, and love, and this is what we, we'll have to figure that out together, and everybody's going to have to figure that out together. And at the very heart of our, our thing is the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, driving that into it. We could not do this without the power of the Holy Spirit working with us. And we've talked about this before: living a life of faith, integrity, and excellence. So it's basically. Uh, sharing stories of men and women who are making, radiating Christ, making him visible, attractive, and admirable by the way they live out their daily life and the real situations of their life, fanning into flame the movement of the Holy Spirit, and then assisting Christians to be co-workers in Christ and fulfill the mission that God has given all of us to take what's gone wrong and set it right. So uh, Luke is going to tell us a little bit about impacting the next generation of coworkers. So I got involved three or four years ago by doing some research to better understand what are the needs of people my age and younger, maybe a little older too, um, and better understanding kind of is is there a need out there and if so, how did how could a need what would a need need or a solution to that need need to look like in order to deliver um, really execute this mission uh, in a way that's effective with their life. And so we started to develop some things like on demand became a big theme. <laughs> First of all, people are looking and needing help and don't know how to get it is, was one theme. So that was reaffirming that we're still in a good business, good industry. <laughs> we, we are doing something that, that is worth investing in. Um, but also it needs to change. It needs, to, it's hard to get people at places at a specific time. So just how do we, and people already have, many people already have a group and few people have time for more than one group. So how do we influence groups that already exist to, uh, to deliver on some of our mission in addition to helping people who don't have groups kind of connect with, with other Christians? Um, so that was, we started to develop solutions around it, working for our father, you know, the things that have been mentioned, podcasts, et cetera. And looking at kind of a snapshot that's very recent, because that was even four or five years ago, and things have continued to evolve from there. I did a Google search, because that's how we find information. And just understanding, OK, what, how, how are the current generation, pr primarily millennials, kind of what's important to them, and what are these macro themes, and how does that align with what we're trying to do here with Worklight? So this, I'll just kind of go through these. Uh, Respect authenticity over authority. 
So the idea of having somebody with a big title in front of a room saying this is what you should do, that is going to be highly unmotivating <laughs> to this group. What, and so if we were in the business of having big name people with big titles telling people what to do, that would be bad news for us as we're trying to do this, this pivot. But the fact that we've always been much more grassroots and much more focused on you know, like average people doing their best within their sphere of influence that's highly aligned to what is trendy and what people are seeking right now. You know, the fact that you, we all are imperfect and we many, you know, all of us have had success and all of us have had failures and to be able to tell stories that illustrate both is very relatable and people can, can, uh, can grab onto that. So authenticity, don't make it seem easier than it is. <laughs> Don't make me feel inferior because you're painting this, you know, one, one situation where you did it right. Um, let's all, you know, bringing one's full self to work is a very trendy thing, um, kind of topic area, and this is very aligned uh, to that. Simple stories over extensive explanations. We've always been in the story business, and we can continue to tell our stories, maybe tweak a little bit how we tell them. Um, but that is highly relevant. Storytelling is a very kind of trendy thing right now in terms of how to communicate and how to illustrate um, behaviors and, and ideals. Um, and that, again, is very aligned to what we've has always been a part of our, our culture. Um, something that's different that, uh, that has been kind of introduced already, but they want to engage on their terms with customization and convenience. It's like the threshold for convenience is exceptional as well. You know, two clicks is, could be even not convenient enough. <laughs> and, and so how to, do we make a major pivot from an organization that is built, and, and also recognizing the goodness of the in-person relationships, but understanding that to build a case and to get people somewhere in person, we need a lot of other things to connect with them. We need to build community in ways that we didn't know how to build it before, You know, um, which kind of goes into my next point, crave sense of belonging in a tribe. They still want to come together, but what that looks like is very different than what, what it's looked like in the past. Um, there's a lot of digital, meaning like online communities where people don't live anywhere near, but they feel a sense of belonging and they feel connected to these people and they feel supported by these people. And maybe once a year they do get together, or once every few months they do get together, but they also have this sense of reinforcement and, and unity um, in an online space, in a digital space. Um, and they're trying to uh, improve themselves. Um, so again, this is an opportunity. They don't think they have all the answers, but they want to feel like they're discovering their, the answers for themselves. So how you present things all makes a difference. The delivery of the mission needs to change significantly, and we're on, our, in our, we're on that, that journey now. Um, but the mission is kind of critical, and it aligns very closely with what we've always been good at. Um, it's just a matter of how we deliver that that is changing and will continue to need to change it to have the same impact that it's all had on you here um, in this room. And one thing that's not on here, but it's like it needs to be a little subversive. So when you look at Christians in commerce, that is a name, you know, Christians, is, you know, it, it's strong and it's clear to some degree, you know, but it kind of smacks you over the head in terms of this is a Christian organization for Christians and, you know, it's in the commerce as business community maybe or whatever you know and that's where you look at work light it's like it's suggestive it describes what we're doing but it's a little more subtle you know it's a little easier to kind of ease into and that is important <laughs> you know because as christians in the workplace these days we need to be subversive you know like and and i don't subversive i'm not trying to say as a negative thing it's 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 positive in that you know the influence will happen subtly and uh, th but you know we can't be overt in kind of hanging on to a bible and like proclaiming the gospel that way given how how work life is these days um so how to do we equip a culture that is expecting more subtleness you know re respecting everyone's worldview and opinion around you because that is important but also being able to have 
to be equipped to to kind of be subversive in the same way and to uh, deliver this message in a way that that impacts them. One of the things that um, Luke had found out when it, in his research is that the word commerce was a negative. It wasn't a positive. One of the pushbacks we kept getting is it seemed exclusive, seemed limiting, and most of the younger people didn't think of themselves being commerce. They said that's what bankers and financial planners do, you know. So you, you had that disconnect. So, and I think the other thing that Luke has pointed out very well. What really attracted me to it as I thought about it over time was this proclaims our mission. This is, I mean, Christians in Congress is about who we are. Work light is what we're called to do. And so we join together shoulder to shoulder, side by side, to be a light and to let the power of the Holy Spirit work through us. And I've always, I really like the little flame, moving from the cross to the flame, you know, brings us into the power of the Holy Spirit which is that the essence that someday we just hope the flame stands for everything, you know, and we ignite that fire that so many of us have experienced ourselves. So I'm going to talk a little bit about creating the work light experience. How do we actually execute this stuff? <clears throat> and I'll tell you at the end, we're going to have a little time for Q&A and somebody will be walking around with a mic. And I would encourage you to ask questions, any concerns you might have, you know, those sorts of things, uh, especially as we migrate. Uh, the uh, work light is not a separate nonprofit. Christians in Commerce is still the nonprofit. And it's been set up to work out of our own 5013C. And uh, this is what they call it, doing business as the DBA of Christians in Commerce. So it's kind of the face of the way we attract people into the shared joint mission that we all have to bring, come together under the banner of God's redemption, salvation, and restoration. So uh, Brian showed you this before. So now we start filling in the boxes, filling in the little things that we're working on. This be kind of becomes our reference point going forward. So uh, one of the things I want to mention, and this is really important to me, you know, a lot, there's a lot of good work-life work ministries, out, faith work ministries out there. And I've had the, uh, the blessing and the privilege to talk to a number of these leaders and that sort of thing, and they're good, good people. And so, you know, especially the group that we connect well with is all of us say, you know, we're in this thing together. And there's a lot of work for all of us to do. This isn't like what typically Brian works with. We are trying to figure out how do I set myself apart? How I'm being competitive. We're trying to figure out how we fit together. You know, what's the part each one of us plays and who's our audience and how can we be the body of Christ together? So, I mean, it's not what, what set, somebody would say, well, what sets Christians and Congress apart? What sets work light apart? You know, it's more about where, where do we fit in? That's what it's about. So one, these are the things I think are very unique to the ministry that God has given to us. And that's the thing I mentioned about bringing together Christian co-workers across traditions for mutual support and greater impact. They, people could use our resources. You know, they could adapt it. They could complement it. That's a very different position than we were in probably 20 years ago. Use the power of real life stories to enlighten and inspire. We, you know, look what we talking about before. You know, there's celebrity Christians around. And a lot of these ministries are built around a handful of people or a particular person that's kind of like the bright, shiny star in the organization. We've never taken that approach. We always want to raise up the grassroots, common people. And uh, so that's what we do. Is our, there's all these wonderful stories. You're going to hear 12 of them this afternoon. We want to publicize that. We want to get out in front of people and, and set it on a mountaintop so that light can shine and not keep it hidden under a bushel basket. We want to feature areas of everyday work life that really matter in ways that can be practically applied. Luke always talks about the gray area. People try to figure out the gray areas. You know, Some things are very black and white, but there's an awful lot out there that's gray. Or I just don't even know what I should do. How do I, how do, I do that? Well, that's really the stories that illustrate that. It puts it in real context. We don't deal with theory. We deal with real application. And emphasize bringing the kingdom of life, the kingdom with humility, grace, and love. We really want to be a contrast to the worldview of uh, personal success. 
but really devotion to our Lord Jesus Christ. So there, we're in the working stages of putting a new face on a lot of our materials. Our plan is trying to shoot for the first of the year to get this stuff done. So these are kind of an approach we might take with the Workday Reflections, uh, the newsletter, and uh, as well as the 9, nine to 5 podcast that we're having. I mean, the uh, Working for Our Father website was put up a couple of years ago, several years ago, just to be an experimentation for us, the ways in which we could try to use this, uh, get the podcast out there, serve things up. And now we want to merge everything together. And the big thing is going to be a new website around worklight.org and uh, putting that together. So here's the uh, target dates we had. So we've been doing the brand development right now. Uh, we're going to try to wrap some, some of that stuff, move that stuff, advance that stuff forward. And then our goal would be to have the website, the mobile site launch the first of the first quarter. Uh, I'd like to put myself out of a job. Uh, the goal is to find you know, some 30-year-olds like the Luke Hales of the world who have new energy, new fresh luck, who will pick up our vision and mission and bring and complement this and uh, bring it with all the creativity if possible. And uh, so we'll be trying to reorganize ourselves around this whole model. And then beyond that, it's going to be video, audio, and digital content development. We're going to be, the new website will have more video, more uh, coursework, more different vignettes. We're going to take the Working for Our Father, for example, and break that apart into each series having three parts to it and then having support conversations, discussion, and a story to complement what's in there so that somebody could do that in a half hour session or a one hour session or they could do it on their own. And uh, we've already, we've already talked to the Denver Faith Institute and Seattle Pacific University. There's some partnership programs that we're gonna explore with them uh, that we can do uh, and, and try to really generate this. So now the reality of all this is this takes money to do it. So I'll let him talk about how we figure out how you're going to support all this. Thanks. Uh, I'm Dan Kuplig, as uh, they mentioned earlier. So I, I help run the finances of uh, CIC and this new work light endeavor. So we're continuing looking at ways to support the organization and pivot it to a new place, an exciting new place. And so we're continuing looking at, obviously, our members being one big part of that, but also fostering other new relationships and uh, to help us. And as people become users of our information, also asking them to contribute. So that's part of what we do. So of course, this doesn't come for, f for nothing. Um, Brian and his club has already invested $100,000 of pro bono work into our rebranding and helping us set things up. But of course, at some point, um, his generosity comes in. And he says, Dan, you actually have to build a website. I say, yep, we'll get busy at that. And we're in the process of doing that. Um, the work like wet websites, um, I'm going to show you a couple different pieces. But we continue to need additional funding. Steve touched on um, his interest in retiring at some point. He's our communications manager. We're going to hire a new communication manager and some other staffing. Um, to bring this to a whole new level, a whole new uh, um, increased excitement, increased um, opportunity. Um, we, we, of course, need some video, some audio. So, of course, we need some funding to, to continue this, this uh, opportunity. So why would someone do this? I am so excited. This is an enormous opportunity. We have the legacy, the strength, and the, um, the opportunity to actually move to a new space, to deliver the important message of filling people with the power of the Holy Spirit to a new generation. Christians in Commerce is supported by 300 people. Now, there's two ways of looking at that. We're only 300 people. <laughs> The other thing is, this is amazing what we pull off with 300 donors. I'm going, oh my gosh, 
We have operations in you know eight, nine different states. We put on national conferences. We got a, an outreach in Uganda that has thousands, you're gonna hear that tomorrow, thousands of people come to our meet. I go, wow, this is amazing. Um, and the move of the spirit the, to bring unity, the bell is rung. Unity is that bell. People want to be united. And you read Revelations and Jesus comes back for one bride. The church is one. Unity is where it's at. It's going to get there. We're going to be an agent of that. And that's part of our special gift. And because we spend so much time at work, it'd be a great way to peop for people to m talk to other Christians. Why? You're at work. I hate to tell you, but a lot of kids aren't going to church. You know, where are they going to bump into Christians? At work. Where are we going to be? At work. I mean, it's just like, this is on. Um, providing these valuable resources. But people always go, um, like last year, Jeremy was here, and he was explaining. They, they usually get 60 people come to their Bible study at this company. And he said, we did working for our father. We had 130 people with standing room only to listen to this. You say, well, Dan, what'd you charge them? Nothing. Because the gospel's for free. We, we don't charge for the gospel. You know, I wish, you know, they'd be like, oh, yeah, you know. Now, now we pay, you know, for the resources, and, and John's always encouraged me to, you know, you got to charge 25 bucks for that. I go, yeah, you're right, you know, because it costs money to print. And, but, but my hope is that donors and supporters and members will step up and say, count me in. That is amazing. How much you need, Dan? We need big money. Great, I'm in. I mean, that's what we need. We need or just a bunch of people putting just a little bit in. That helps a lot, too. Um, cultivating, we already touched on this. People are craving. They're craving connection. <laughs> they just want it so bad. And we're, we're a conduit for that. So we want to add fuel to the flame. Is three things you do. Pray, work, contribute. We need your prayers. We need everyone's prayers. There's a bunch of work to do. There's new opportunities. Like just at my, um, I go to the Twin City group here. Just this past week, we had two, a young buck, a 25-year-old show up to our meeting. Brand new person. Another new guy, a 40-year-old, said, hey, I, I, he's coming out of Teens Challenge. He's, he had a, a, a bad run with drugs. He needs a new place to plug in. There's all kinds of these things. So we want to continue to provide this opportunity to uh, add fuel. So you go, how can I contribute? <laughs> it, it was kind of a funny thing. When I joined the, the organization, I said, oh, my God, it's actually hard to contribute. I mean, you have to go through six six places and deep in the website there's finally get to a contribution i'm like you know i went we gotta make this simple i mean like like look at that if it's more than two clicks it's not going to happen i mean it's got to be like bang so we got this matter of fact this is set and going if you if you typed in your phone after i'm done this afternoon when all you guys go to worklight.org it'll send you to working for our father and you page down you hit the donate button this page will come up <laughs> oh yeah and you can, and we well, want it's you. Not there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So nice job, Dan. Neat color. I love that. <laughs> so, um, so you go. Oh, how can I contribute? I can on board right there. I mean, when you're talking to friends, colleagues, hey, you want to support this endeavor? Um, that's the way to do it. And you can say, oh, we really like continuing contributions. That's that's what the whole trend is. Like everyone's a member. Like you got the, you got your. You know, workout place, it's a membership. I mean, everything is a membership driven. So we're going to pivot towards encouraging people to give, you know, 25 bucks a month, 100 bucks a month, 250 bucks a month, whatever you want to do, even 10 bucks a month. We're thrilled. Any contribution, nothing too small, reoccurring month in, month out. That's how we um, can continue to provide some financial resources 
to get this going. Um, so th this is the simple math. You go, oh, how are you going to make that happen? 100 people, 100 bucks a month, that's 120,000. If I get 200 people at 50 bucks, that's 100, another 120. 40 people for 25 bucks, another 120. $360,000. So you say, oh, you can need like six, seven, eight hundred people. I mean, you think about that. All I need is eight hundred people. <laughs> eight hundred people doing that, we fully fund this thing. Now, in addition to that, we'll go out to other organizations, and and Greg Atkins is involved with our 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 writing of of for big companies and donors and things like that, but. <coughs> Let's just say that hasn't been really effective, frankly. Um, we've spent two years doing that, and ambivalent at best, because we're competing against the little sisters of the poor, the, the people building latrines in, in Africa, and they go, and you're a bunch of rich businessmen, and you need money. <laughs> yeah, we, we just have really bad businessmen who don't make any money. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's who comes to us, yeah. Um, so we really attract uh, unprofitable business people. I go, really? <laughs> You're that bad? I mean, it's just like, it's just upside. They just look at you like, um. matter of fact, the other day, this is so funny, one of the board members mentioned, he got a call and says, yeah, you're involved with Christians and Commerce. Um, yeah, I got this other organization. Can you fully fund us? <laughs> I'm going, uh, we're on our own fundraising. <laughs> 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 they think we just got piles of money. So. I know there's piles of money in this room and part of our membership have piles of money. We just need a little bit of that flowing into the organization and we'll be able to impact the next generation. All right, so like the darkness, this is my transition to questions and answers. So if someone has questions, um, we're more than happy to address these because this is a, a big shift for us. So there's the bike. Um, yeah, I, I like it. I like the, the work light. Um, so I'm curious um, how um, uh, the direction of work light, if uh, challenge uh, weekends um, are still important, or uh, do you think millennials, um, how do they feel about a weekend, which was very important for me in my Christians in Commerce experience? Um, and learning more about the Holy Spirit. Well, one thing I'd say, you know, Luke has the second header. I mean, Challenge Weekends will continue to go on. Christians and Commerce chapters will continue to go on. Uh, we need this stuff to be applied locally as far as that's concerned. Uh, we have to figure out, I mean, we're going to go out where people are and draw them into the vision and mission of what we're trying to do. And ultimately, we like to have, I mean, one of the things we're talking about is events around the country, much like you'll see this afternoon, maybe for an hour and a half, we can bring people together and then try to foster more of a broader grouping of people going on Challenge Weekends, you know, supporting that sort of thing. We'll probably take a fresh look at Challenge Weekends and see how that, that can, you know, adapt to the situation that we have out there, but without losing anything and praying with people for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so that's all part of it. We just haven't got that far in the thinking of it, but we're not going to, we're not walking away from it. It's the core of who we are. I think for myself, I've gained an appreciation over the last four years on how something digital or online is not enough at all. You know, that that's kind of a, a required element for ongoing awareness and support. You know, if you look at all, if I look at myself and all the things I see in a given day, just between social media and email and just being on line and podcast what I'm listening to it's just thousands of messages and so we need work light to be in that stream and delivering some of these messages to support people on an ongoing basis because they're being inundated but that alone is not enough but if they're supported enough you know they will be willing to invest some time you know we, we evolved the challenge weekend to be I think a day and a half and you know to ad adjust not to make it too lean where it's not as impactful you know, but I went through one of my first one this year, and it was terrific, and it was time well spent, but it was because of two years of kind of me getting cultivated 
in 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 all things CIC that I gained and appreciated w was willing to make very big sacrifices. You know, in my own life, at least what it felt like to to commit that size. Um, but that's where you know, like getting anyone to show up even for a half day is a big big ask, and it needs to be continually reaffirmed and the case built through all these other channels. But that's where the life changing will happen. <laughs> at these in person, you know, and so that's a critical component and something that we're good at. It's all the other pieces that we need to build out and really invest in because that essentially to make what we've always done successfully as effective. Please wait for the mic. Gail Cardwell. Um. I just want to say I, uh, great, great work. Uh, the Spirit, Holy Spirit was all over this, and uh, it's really so heartwarming to see it uh, come to this point in such really a short period of time. So thank you for uh, the devotion of your time. I have a very practical budget question, <laughs> and that is that um, I'm wondering if, you know, you still have to keep the lights on and kind of all of the, you know, ongoing costs, right, of a going concern. And I know we're morphing to this. So do I need to give to both? In other words, do I need to give over and above what I might give to help just operationally to fund work like at understanding that it will all come together at some point? And I guess really what I'm asking is, there's at some point in the budgeting process, the strategic plan that you're funding, and then there's the ongoing operations, and they come together at some point. So I'm, I'm wondering when I donate, do my husband and I give to both, or is this covering everything? If you understand right, right. what I mean, is this, yeah. 300 oh, yeah. yes. The answer is yes. Dan's yeah. going to say yes. Give yes, to both. Dan's <laughs> yeah. no. uh, great, great question, Gail. Thanks. Um, we were debating. Terry and I spent uh, two, three hours talking about, now, how are we going to do it? Are we going to have two campaigns and confuse the poor souls? Or one campaign? We're just going to have one campaign. Okay. Now, it might be CIC and Worklight co-brand, like to members, like, let me put it this way. We love your money any way you send it. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Fully welcome. If you want to write a check to CIC, like we said, we're still CIC. We still have chapters. Chapters aren't going to change. You're still going to do the same things you're doing in your chapters. Uh, you're going to reimburse and all that. That's not changed. We're, we're just, if you think about it, we're adding a porch to the house. Um, the porch is an easy, accessible thing. The house is CIC. The house is like, getting you to a, a, a meeting and all that. But the porch is really easy, and we're putting on this huge porch, and we need some funding for it. Now, if you send your money only to work light, that's fine. If you send your money to CIC, that's fine. If you send the money to both, super. Because we're in a season of transition. But by, 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 the, by a year from now, we'll probably have it under one yeah. work light. And we're in, in practicality behind the scenes, we're all working together on this thing. Yeah, there's just one budget. The budget sheet lo all, all blends it all together yep. and stuff like this. It's all Christians and Commerce nonprofit is what it is. I think the other thing besides our own members, I mean, we're very sensitive to not uh, create undue concern with our members, like we're walking away from Christians and Commerce because we're really not. Mm -hmm. And uh, But we do want to broaden our audience, and we can't go out there and get other people to give to Christians and Carvers, but we can get them to give to Worklight. Right. You know, so Worklight, that goes into an account that's all part of the 501 c thing. So I don't care who you write your check to, Worklight or CIC, it all goes in the same bucket. Okay. I was doing good until you said it's a porch. Now I'm totally confused. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was with you, and I, I mean, I came in here confused, and then I got clarity. Because I thought work light meant quitting it too, and then you explained it all, and it it and it made sense <laughs> until the porch part. And um, I, I literally thought I'm, I I thought until about 60 seconds ago that we are rebranding Christians in Commerce, which is like we've just painted the house, 
or we put a new name on. I mean, it's more than a name. It's, it's, it's a branding effort. But I literally thought that we're going back to Tampa and we're going to drop the Christians in Commerce logo and we're going to put work light on it. And we are now presenting ourselves to the world at large as we are work light, which is a DBA of Christians in Commerce. Right. But the brand is now, the brand we're building is work light. And Christians in Commerce is our foundation and our history. Now I'm, I'm literally confused. Uh, uh, Steve, will help address. me. I'll help you. I'll, give you, uh, I'll try to help out and confuse you. Uh, so uh, Christian Commerce, the website Christian Commerce is going to continue to exist out there, but we are creating a new one called worklight.org, but we're not going to do anything to continue to upgrade. I mean, that thing's outdated and everything else. All that we do will be put behind worklight. That's the new face on our organization. You can operate as a Christian and Commerce chapter out there, and you can still pro you know, access the resources that are on that website, but all our energy is going to be put into work light because it's the future. That's what it is. So we're not telling people you can't use Christians in Commerce. You can use Christians in Commerce. If you feel that works best for you, use it. You know, but what we want you to do is go out and help us create work light groups and that sort of thing. And uh, you want to say, well, we're a Christian in Commerce. Sub think of we're supporting in uh, Fresno, we're supporting work light efforts out there. That's fine. If you want to just do it as work light, that's fine too. That's what our materials are going to be branded. I know that clears up, but we're making a transition. I have an, I have an opinion on this, uh, but I'm not on the leadership committee. I actually think for those of you who um, love Christians in Commerce and you just can't, imagine changing it just part of your group and keep it otherwise move away from it run towards work light and build a single house just from a from a clarity and a communication standpoint it is just a name the organization um, is is hasn't changed in its essence but I, I I think you'll be a lot more effective if you more quickly move towards the work light brand and and you all go that way that would be my recommendation but I mean, you, you're gonna have to deal with address it because the reality of it is our newsletter and everything else is going to be branded under work light you know but uh, we have a bit all of us know if we're real honest with one another growing Christian under the Christian and commerce brand has not been effective obviously I believe we believe God wants us to do something different and this is what we think he's asking us to do but you, we want you to be a part of that, helping us figure out how to apply it in your situations and circumstances. Uh, just uh, John DeSanto, you'll be at, we'll do your second because you're on this afternoon. Let's, uh, where's Ed? Where's my mic guy? Right here. Oh, there you go. We have one there. So, um, does everybody know Beth Bruce? I should tell you, Beth Bruce. Let me you say have it to first. No, let me. Though. Okay. So you know, Beth, Beth is also uh, green. I talk too much, don't I? <laughs> it was great to work with us. She's been helping us out with the workday reflections. And going forward, she's going to be helping us make a transition. By the way, I should have mentioned Alex Soldholt, who was here last year. Uh, he got another job offer about two weeks ago. And uh, it's a good job offer for him. And we're going to miss him terribly. So we're making a some adjustments, so she stepped into that piece of the, his job. So um, two things. When I think about work light, I look at it as a full kitchen remodel. We just gutted it. The structure's still there, but it's all brand new, which we've done at our house twice, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, it's, and it's a hard transition. But I am also a wordsmith, and words are really important to me. So to Brian's comment, I find the words challenge weekend challenging, and I find chapter challenging. So can we have work life happy hours? Can we do uh, weekend gatherings? Let's, let's figure out how to use the new language and still have the same effect, well, uh, actually a better effect, using new language. So. Um, if we're going to switch over, I'd like to see it be wholehearted. Mm -hmm. okay. a, a good comment, Beth. Um, probably a 
a be better analogy, Dan might have been. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for, for I knew that my analogy just bombed. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm from Minneapolis, uh, and uh, I live in a community where there's a, a lot of teardowns, and uh, probably what we're looking at here is a teardown and a uh, uh, beautiful new house. <laughs> but anyway, my, my, my comment would be... <laughs> I don't think it was... I don't think <laughs> <laughs> ne ne next time you talk, you can add that down. <laughs> uh, five years from now, uh, I'm interested in joining this organization. I'm assuming it's going to be work light, not Christians and Commerce, correct? It's the plan. Let's see Good. what happens. I think it's a good plan. One I've step at a time. I've been involved since 1983. I, I know I don't look that old, but uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, I, 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 I think you know, trying to grow this organization over the last, I don't know how many years has been a bit frustrating. And uh, I, I couldn't be more excited about uh, this uh, this new endeavor. I think we're definitely on the right track. I think the, uh, the you want to take the mic around? I think that uh, our goal is to, be, is to let the spirit make work light so hugely successful, it'll be a moot point about what we do because it will happen. It will just occur. Well, um, I'm Will DeSanto, and um, I'm excited as all get out. I almost want to dance here for work life. <laughs> and I've been involved in Christian commerce since 1983. And um, so with along with Louis Grams and me, I've been the longest in Christians in commerce here. And I am excited as all get out. Let's get out of Christians and commerce and light the world with his Holy Spirit through Amen. our work life. Amen. And let's go. Hi, I'm uh, Michael. I'm with the La Quinta group. And I just want to say that this is a great um, idea. It's wonderful. And I applaud all the effort and the time that everyone has put into this. I think it's a f uh, uh, just the going in the right direction. I thought, uh, Luke, when you said, um, a few things, and, and uh, Steve, when you said something about unity of, of Christians, I think that's a, a theme that we can, we just have to really jump on top of. And then Luke, when you said um, a subversion and things like that, the discovery of, of God in this moment, in these, in these environments that we have in our different uh, uh, challenge, or, um, cha uh, chapters, I said, is um, the discovery part is I think you need to really put that emphasis on that as well because that is what the result is of all of us in this room is that we have discovered God and he's been revealed to us even more through Christians and commerce. So it's the vehicle that we have um, we've walked through and we continue. We started in 1983 over here with Will and, and, uh, and everyone else had, had joined a long time ago. But it's the discovery that brings us back here. So with all that, the unity of message with all, throughout all Christians and come and discover God with us is something I would really like you to emphasize because I think that's where, where, where you're going to keep your membership and, and continue to increase it. So uh, and I, not thoughts. only discover God, but be the light of the world, as he called us to be. Let's be the light of the world. The world is suffering. We see it every day at our workplace. Let's be the light of Christ and let the power of the Holy Spirit work through us. Amen to that. I, I want to second what Beth recommended. I, I think it would be fantastic for us to have work light happy hours and <laughs> work, work light weekend gatherings. That's perfect. <laughs> my, my other thought was, I know we need some money for this, but I think a great way to promote what we're trying to do is to be on Christian radio and TV. I think that this concept, this program, what we're trying to do would be fantastic program material to be interviewed by a lot of the different hosts that do that. But also it would be really good to have little 30 second commercials. And it might be a really good way to let all those Christians out there know that we're there for them. Amen. I think for me, it's been hard to be patient through this process because I've wanted, there are so many opportunities to grow our reach and our awareness and to get people into the fold. But until we had all the pieces, you know, until we could have been promoting Christians in commerce and then haven't been very, so we've been, I've been biting, just like deep breathing through this process, you know, until now we are comfortable in our skin. And it's like now we have a face and, and now 
so many analogies. Some are better than others, but <laughs> 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 like now we're in a position to aggressively and widely go out because the substance and we have enough programming and now we have a face, a brand that we can in a unified way and in a non-confusing way, clear way, move forward, kind of broadly get this out. So absolutely agree. Why don't you pray for this afternoon too because it, for me, this is what uh, inspires me. Yeah, this, uh, <coughs> I'll just tell you this little story. When, uh, when we were playing the work like gathering, this, uh, this little afternoon thing that we're doing, it wasn't what I had in mind. I was thinking it was going to be lo more like Ted like talks and those sorts of things. That's not what happened. Because all the people I started to talk to had these incredible stories of real practical application. And I said, well, this is what we're about. And I mean, they're moving stories when I talk to these people, you know, and the cumulative effect of, you know, 12 people from different walks of life with a passion for the Lord and living it out in very genuine ways. That's what this is about. And so, I mean, to kind of, we're ready. We've got, the, we've got the tracks laid. Now we just need to get this stuff out there and do more of it. One thing, I'm Paul from Mesa. I'm excited because of the new name because commerce scares older people because <laughs> they say we're retired, some people. You know, we don't work at a workplace. Work light is for everybody. And when I see work light, I think of the dimmer switch. You could turn it full and you can mm. turn it down. So you can get anybody. Yep. Yeah. Praise God, thanks. How we do it on time, by the way? Okay. So two more questions we'll take. Um, could you give us some uh, understanding on how you arrived at the term work light? Uh, and whether it didn't, you know, I understand Luke's uh, uh, discussion about uh, you need to be a little subversive sometimes yeah. to deal with your audience and your target people and what have you. Uh, but uh, if you could give us some uh, history and understanding on how you happen to line on uh, work light, I'm not making a judgment. I'm just, I'm just curious uh, well, we, what uh, led you yeah, to well that. You generated, you know. Yeah. Uh, so actually, my. Business partner and our creative director walked in the back hey. of the room. There was Mike back there, so he he was uh, instrumental. Uh, so all of the stuff that we showed you and more gives us the sandbox of what we're trying to communicate. And then there's a process where we I don't know how many names we considered, but you know start with a long list. One today, one of the key questions is. Is it available as a domain, as a URL? Uh, because we want, when people hear it, to be able to quickly find it. And so that actually typically eliminates 90% of, of what we start with. Um, and we thought it was amazing that worklight.org was available. It was, we, th we think, ordained by God. <laughs> uh, so we, we narrowed it down to two or three names um, and then had a lot of debates and and ended up, it just just felt right. It rang true to that architecture, that that positioning architecture that you saw. Just that it would really clearly. It has a lot of interesting dynamics to the meaning. You know, our the the work when God gives it to us, His it, the burden is light. You know, when when we step into what God is calling us to, uh, the. The fact that we're bringing light into the workplace. There's just a lot of places we can take it creatively, and people can attach meaning to it that's connected to the mission. We did take two names into focus group testing, and uh, my favorite one was not a good name. <laughs> <laughs> is what we learned, and so I mean we did get some some feedback as well from kind of uh, just objective, you know, people in our target group who haven't been along this journey with us, and so they could get some fresh eyes on it, and that was very, very helpful in affirming this is the right name, as, as well as kind of uh, honing in on what, how to bring that to life. I, I would say, too, just in my background in advertising, one of the things you always talk about, there's no perfect name out there, necessarily. You need to find a good name that resonates well with people and then make it great. And so it's really how we dress it out how we serve it up in the context we put it in. You know, that's why the video, I mean, for example, the video that we did is all designed to roll out what's work like and create that kind of emotion, that feel to it. That's what 
communications is all, all about. Give you a good, make a good first impression. So work like to all the points that Brian was making. Shine bright, light the darkness. Uh, the, uh, let your light uh, shine on the good works that you make him glory to. Be the light of Christ to shine on uh, the good works that you make him glorify the Father in heaven. You know, all those other phrases are there. I, I looked up all the light passages in scripture. I was just amazed at how much light was in there. And this is what we need as Christians to be light. God's got a bad rap out there because he gets associated with so many negative things. Light is not one of them. You know, and so that's something that we should really start building it on. And, the, and all the stories to me are all shine, bright, so, uh, light being shined in the situation and circumstances. Do you want to say anything, Louis? We should give you a chance. I'll put you on the spot. As a founder, do you have any feelings about this that you want to express? We'll give you a mic, though. <laughs> uh, I, this is exciting. I, I think um, when, when we started, our hope was to create an organization uh, that was filled with the Holy Spirit and spread the baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, freely, gave it away, that would be transformative in the marketplace uh, and in the lives of people that are out there in all kinds of jobs, every every category. We didn't we didn't have any specific category in mind. We thought every anybody that has a, any kind of a job uh, should be able to be a part of this because we really believed from the beginning that God wanted each one of us to be a light in the marketplace, and that was that was a part of our initial vision. The name Christians in Commerce was a borrowed name. There was a, a breakfast group that had started here in the Twin Cities um, that came up with the name Christians in Commerce, and they merged into what we were doing when we started Christians in Commerce here. And uh, we just kind of borrowed their name because we, we hadn't really thought about a name at that point. <laughs> and uh, we had all kinds of ideas about what we might be able to do, but when we launched, all we really had was the Challenge Weekend. And we weren't even sure what it would look like to have chapters or anything like that. All that stuff just started getting invented as we went along. And um, our, our hope was always that we'd be able to have a, a much broader entry point for people. We saw that the, the challenge weekend or whatever context that we, type of an identity that became, that that would be something uh, that the, the core content that's there needed to be communicated and passed on to people coming in. And we had that as our gate coming in because um, we wanted everybody to be able to be on the same page as a part of the organization. But I think we've got other tools now, uh, especially uh, working for our father is a, is a, a great introduction and a lot of the other materials because they're consistent with the thinking in that they all serve as a great introduction into what we're tr trying to be and trying to do and at some point people need to go I think still through that that passageway where they get the the core uh, content but if it if it's two years later as it was for Luke I think that's terrific I, I don't think that really matters it's uh, because there's a lot of it that you just kind of pick up and absorb from each other as you're going along. And as you're sharing daily life in the small groups especially, um, those, things are, those things are rubbing off on you. You, you. you pick them up from each other. And, and that's where you grow in a hunger to understand what it is that I'm really getting into. Uh, so I, I, I'm excited about this. I think it's really a terrific direction. Yeah. And uh, I, I admit, the first time I heard work light, <laughs> I thought, uh, where do I get one of those? 
<laughs> or L I T E. <laughs> yes, or, yeah, or work light. Yes, L I T E. Uh, I'd like that job. And uh, <laughs> but but as soon as you put light in the dark, light the darkness, and the the flame over the uh, eye, uh, the message is clear uh, to those who see, uh, and it and it's subversive enough that for those that don't see, they can get caught. <laughs> so I, I think it's really good. The, uh, you know, the reality of it is, Christian's comments would re reinforce this the last thing, is it doesn't resonate with the audience we're trying to reach. Commerce does not, that's the issue. And we have all this affection for it because we spent 20, 30 years together in it and it's taken out its own meaning around that. You know, but there's no future in us because we're dying off. And we need to hand our, hand our legacy on to another generation. The board is here. <coughs> One of the things we want to do is when you have conversations with us, tell us what you think. You know, and uh, we want feedback. We want to know what, the, how this, what resonates with you, what doesn't resonate with you. And uh, especially watch what happens this afternoon. Tell us how you experience that and what you think about that. Uh, we do have some ideas on how to roll this out. We, we might not have a chance to talk about that, but we can talk around the table about those sorts of things. <laughs>